George, we're back here at the Ocean County Courthouse for day two of Lucchese Capo Martin Tassetta's appeal, trying to get out of jail, trying to get a new trial. What do you think so far coming up? I think we're coming to the end of a 30 year fight. And I think what I've seen today from the defense was uh, very effective. And it's going to end up, I think, at the end of today, it's going to be in the hands of a judge. She's going to have to make a decision. But at a certain point, I think the state has to acknowledge uh, one, they dropped the ball in terms of handling some of the evidence. And two, to retry this case, if she orders a retrial, is almost impossible. 32 years old, the case, uh, half the people who worked on the case for the state are deceased. Uh, some witnesses, Al Diarco is deceased. Diarco is deceased. Phil Leonetti, the other key witness, I'm told, will not come back here. So where are you going to build a case if, if you have to retry? I mean, that's, in fairness to Martin to said, I mean, that's, I think, the least that should happen, is that, all right, new trial, case folds, the, the state says, no, we're not going to go forward, and that's the end of the story. Yeah, 28 years in prison. Yeah. Two key witnesses today, David Runke, his attorney from back when the trial took place in 93, and Michael Critchley, who represented Michael Tassetta in this case. They were damn good the, witnesses. Two of the giants of the New Jersey Defense Park. Yeah. Absolutely. Historic kind of guys. Been around forever. Both very effective, um, and at one at one point when Critchley's on the witness stand, you didn't know if he was the attorney questioning or answering the questions. I mean, he, he kind of took over. He delivered, I think, a very effective. The, the bottom line in all of this, I mean, they argue about these dental records where they where they rigged, where they're not rigged, the alibi witnesses, alibi defense, etc. Critchley basically cut to the heart of it and said, "Look, if we could challenge the credibility of the two key witnesses." It would affect everybody in this case. And with that FBI analysis that we did not get, that we should have gotten, we could have had a very effective way to challenge the credibility of Phil Leonetti and, and Al Bianco. And I think that was the heart of it in terms of, if you want to get past all of the, when did this happen, who did it, what? And that's and that's germane, but it's not as important as the point I think that Critchley made. All right, if you're the judge up there listening, Runky and Critchley left no doubt no doubt whatsoever that they did not see these records, did not receive these records, didn't know about these records until they were shown them later after a Freedom of Information Act request in 2015 and when this appeal gets filed. There's no doubt about that at this point. That's sworn testimony in court before this judge. Yeah, and, and the fundamental question is, should they have been shown these documents? I think the answer is yes. So if the judge gets to that point, then she's got to say, all right, what do I do now? Do I throw this case out? Do I order a new trial? I think that's where we stand right now. Okay. Let's back up a little bit. The last hearing, Bob Carroll got on the stand. The guy who prosecuted this case, the current Morris County prosecutor, he stood his ground when he testified for almost an hour yeah. and a half, almost two hours. Stood his ground, um, denied vehemently that anybody would have altered, tampered with, or hidden evidence in this case. He said, that's not my team. We had a tireless, hardworking team. We wouldn't do it and we would investigate it if someone suggested we did. Look, at the end of the day, somebody did play with one of the numbers to change the date on the, the dental appointment that would have given Martin Cassetta an alibi. Somebody played with it. And as all the defense attorneys who testified said, why would Martin Cassetta or anybody in the defense camp do that? Do that? It goes nowhere for them. So somebody played with it. That's number one. Number two, and more important, Carroll sent it down for an analysis and the analysis never went to the defense attorneys, yeah. and it should have. FBI lab in Quantico looked at this. FBI lab in Quantico gave a report back. They sent photos back of what they found, those kind of things. Both defense attorneys and Maria Noto, last time, the last hearing, all said they never saw that, never received it, and they should have had it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's a fundamental question. That should have been turned over to them to do whatever they could have done with it. That's the point that Christian was making. We could have done something with this. We could have used it to challenge the credibility of Leonetti and Diarco, who both say Martin Tassetta said he was involved in this murder, when in fact we've got an FBI document now backing up the alibi that he was at the dental office that day. And when the judge accepted this appeal, she said two issues. Did something happen with that evidence? Did they receive it? Is it a Brady issue that they, they did not receive it? And is it material to the rest of the case because Tassetta was found not guilty of the murder Critchley and Runke right. made it a point today to kind of like stop their testimony and say what they would have done with this to impeach the rest of this case had they had the information. Exactly. I mean, Leonetti and Diarco were key witnesses in the overall racketeering charge. 
and you could have challenged them based on that. I mean, that's fundamental to all of us. And the, and the other fundamental issue is, under the rules of, of jurisprudence, they should have been given those documents. No doubt about that. No question about that. So now the question is, all right, how does the judge remedy this offense? And we'll see. You know, it, it almost doesn't matter. You don't have to prove who fooled the documents. Right. That's not a, that's almost a side issue. The question is, there was an FBI analysis, it was turned over to the prosecution, he should have given it to the defense. He did not, and, and that's where we stand. Okay, we had an outburst in court today, <laughs> small outburst a by classic, Martin Tessetta. A classic. Give us what he said. Yeah, I mean, this was when we were debating about whether or not this stuff should have been turned over to the, the defense, and, and, and Martin screamed out that if you had turned it over to him, meaning Pritchley, we wouldn't be here. And then, he apologized to the judge. He said, Judge, my tongue is bleeding. I'm biting my tongue so hard. I'm sorry. It's classic. He apologized yeah. it and sat down. Right. We also had another interesting development for today. Uh, a guest, a visitor. Well, there's been a lot of people showing up in support. Um, Martin just said his family, his wife. Uh, but today, Joe Kernan of the... Well, it, you know, it's funny. I mean, he's a nice guy. He's a family guy yes. in that he and Martin are They are cousins. related, yes. Grandparents, I think, two, two. They were sisters, two of their, their grandparents. Real family, is he said. Real family. Joe Pern is also allegedly a capital in the Lucchese crime family, which is the overarching issue here is this, this is a Lucchese organization. So, yeah, it was interesting to see him there. Um, I mean, everybody, I think, wants to show up and support Marty Cassetta because of what he's been through. 28 years is a long time for what he was convicted of. Right. You saw him today in court, looks pretty good. Looks His family's fine. backing him up, looks yeah. positive, yeah. looks upbeat, yeah. looks like he's ready to get released. I don't know if I would look that good after 28 years. I would. Yeah, he looked really good, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So now we're at a situation now, we got summations. That'll wrap up the rest of the day. Both sides will be able to give a written summation to the judge. She said at the end of the morning session, she wants to see all the evidence in her office. And then she's probably going to do a written decision. We don't know if she's going to come in and do it orally in court, but we'll see. Yeah, and I'm, hopefully it's going to be within the next two or three weeks. Should be.